All right, this is a short talk, and I, but this is the most common question we get in clinic. Every single patient that walks into clinic asks me this question. And uh, so um, the backdrop of this is people with ME-CFS have hyperreactive immune systems. Many of you have mast cell activation syndrome. Many of you have autoimmune dis disorders, either known or unknown behind um, your illness. And so everyone's worried, that makes sense. Okay, so first to ask, say, how do vaccines work? There's three basic vaccines out there. The one that most everyone took, the mRNA vaccine, the first one to come out, that was Pfizer and Moderna. The second one, the one that just, just was approved um, yesterday was the uh, one that's an old fashioned vaccine that uses adjuvant and bits and pieces of virus. And the third one is um, the J&J &J vaccine that used a viral vector to expose basically mRNA to, um, to your immune system. So we have all these different things, but vaccines work by seeing something that that shouldn't be there and reacting to it. And they're designed to try to make really big reactions so that your body will make a long-term memory response to that uh, vaccine. And so mRNA's protein subunits, the one like no no Novavax, it just got approved, or vector vaccines, which is J and J. So um, most everybody got the original vaccine, not everybody, and they got it twice. A lot of people ask, should they have it the third time? Because there is a recommendation right away, one, two, three, to get three shots if you're very immunocompromised. However, the only people in my population that meet that criteria are the people that are on really significant immunosuppressive drugs, okay? So most MECFS patients do not meet the criteria or need to have a third initial dose. So that's the first question that comes up a lot. And the mo mostly the answer is no. If you were on say rituximab or some really big, big, big gun immunosuppressant, the answer would be yes. But the answer is no for almost everybody else. So the next question is, should I have a booster? And the answer is yes, but. So there's always a but because, but everybody's different. Those of you in my practice that have had uh, vaccines, a lot of you guys told me you just sailed through. You were shocked. You hardly had a problem at all. And other people said, oh my God, the worst thing that ever happened to me was get my COVID vaccine, just like every other vaccine I've ever had. It knocked me off my feet. So that was your clue, that if you had trouble with vaccines in the past, you probably need to be careful in the future. So this is, um, I put some recommendations up that actually are more, more um, official than me, just talking about what I think, but I am an immunologist, I get, get this stuff. Um, but the Mass Cell Disease Society put up a nice recommendation, and I'm going to say this is probably the best one for MECFS, because most MECFS patients at some level have mast cell stuff going on, and mast cells are highly inflammatory, and they react to vaccines. They're the main reason why vaccines give you grief. And so, um, so taking care of your mast cells becomes the most important thing you can do and to be safer in going forward. So this is the mast cell society's recommendations, do get the vaccine. Um, pay attention to how you responded before. If you were already on your mast cell drugs before and you did well, then for heaven's sakes, keep taking them. It's more or less the common sense of this. But, um, but that there are drugs that can make it safer. And I've got a slide for that. But um, these slides will be available to you and you can go to these websites and read about it. Now, this is the American College of Rheumatology. They think about autoimmunity and they're saying, do take vaccines. Even if you have an autoimmune disease and you tend to be hyperinflammatory, it's more important to live through a pandemic than to uh, be completely concerned about a relapse of your autoimmune disease because of a vaccine. Nonetheless, there is a risk of a relapse of your autoimmune disease because of a vaccine. And so, um, there's things you might want to do. If you just can't be vaccinated because of past experiences that were god awful, then uh, make sure everyone around you is vaccinated. That's called cocooning. That means everybody around you is safer than, and it makes your exposures less. Um, if you're going to start an immunosuppressive therapy for some reason, get vaccinated before you do so your immune system memory is cemented before you start screwing it up by taking immunosuppressive therapies. Vaccines have roughly a 10% risk of flaring an autoimmune condition. So it's real, um, but it can be uh, much lessened by taking pre-medications. 
So what are those pre-medications? These are them. Most important slide I got here. The mast cell is the main thing that's signaling all this inflammation to your immune system. So you can stabilize mast cells. Now, to stabilize mast cells, you got to stabilize them for a couple of days before you get vaccinated. They don't stabilize quickly. So being on a medication or a nutraceutical that quiets mast cells by stabilizing them is important. Quercetin, which I always mispronounce, luteolin um, are two herbal drugs out there. I'd recommend that you watch out for luteolin because they're um, olive oil sources that are very safe. And there's peanut oil sources that, you know, in an allergic population sounds kind of nuts to use peanuts. So um, watch your source on luteolin. Ketotifin or ketotifin is a uh, antihistamine. It's available in Canada and all of the EU and England, um, all over the world, except the United States as a prescription um, and uh, antihistamine that's a mast cell stabilizer. In this country, you can have it compounded. You can get it because we, we have the source material that's approved by the FDA. So you can get it, but you have to get it as a compounded drug or you have to get it from out of country. Aspirin used carefully because some people are allergic to aspirin um, is also a mast cell stabilizer at some level, very mildly. And vitamin C is also helpful. So we usually recommend quercetin and luteolin because you can get it, it's easy. Um, if you've got ketotifin, that's a good one. These are all additives. The more, you know, they, they work better together. Now, nonetheless, you're going to leak some. So mopping up what leaked, and that's the histamines. The histamines are just one of the 30 plus mediators that come out of a, a mast cell when it's being inflammatory, but it's, they're awful important. So um, H1 plus H2. Antihistamines that you take for colds and flus are called H1 antihistamines. And the ones you take to prevent stomach ulcers are called H2s. So when you use H1 plus H2 together, you get a tenfold increase in the antihistamine effect, which is pretty cool. So you can take your everyday antihistamine, the one you tolerate, this Zyrtec or Sertrazine is a common one, Allegro, which is Fenfanodine, um, but taking it with an H2 like um, Fomotidine, which is Pepsi. And then mopping up the rest of it, um, there are a bunch of leukotrienes. There's a singular, which is monolucast, um, a common prescription drug. So these are available to you, and you should consider that. Uh, just to say that we got bragging rights, we have Dr. Harris Theoharerides joining our team July 1st. He's one of the world's foremost mast cell um, experts. And his um, colleague that was uh, worked with him years ago and is circling back to work with us and with him again, Dr. Durasami, who just joined our team on Wednesday. So we have two great big mast cell wizards joining our team. We couldn't be more excited. And if you see Dr. Um, Thea Herardi's website, Mast Cell Master, you'll learn a lot more about mast cells than you ever knew before. You might want to consider that. That's it. Thank you very much.